All right, lads, let's have a little conversation about an exploit. I'm really excited about it because there's been a lot of little cheesy exploits you can do with tanks in Hoi 4 since No Step Back. And it's probably the reason why you're not aware of it because it goes down a path of tanks that no one goes down. What do you think is the tank path that no one goes down? Is it somewhere over here? Is it somewhere over here? Modern tank? No one does modern tanks? Are you mad? Modern tanks are based. No, honestly, modern tanks are amazing. They basically do everything. They have the speeds of lights. They have the armor of heavies and they have the cost efficiency of mediums they basically do everything now the answer is guys is amphibious nobody goes for amphibious so the little explanation on amphibious there's two kinds of amphibious there's an amphibious chassis so basically the, the tank designers have gone into their secret little room and they've like let's design a tank that is dedicated for amphibious invasions and this is the boy that they come up with that beast of a tank which is a beast um, Amphibious tank chassis. Look at that boy. So the question is then, if this is the amphibious tank, then what is this? The amphibious drive. The amphibious drive allows you to put a propeller on any other tank chassis apart from the super heavy tank. So it allows you to put a propeller on any other tank, which allows it to have bonuses for amphibious invasions, going over rivers and going into marshes. You basically may put a propeller on a tiger tank, or in this case, a T-34. T-34 with a propeller. But you ask the question, Dave, what's the exploit? What's going on? So let's do a little uh, bit of research research shenanigans. Alrighty then, so let's go into the tank design and have a little cheeky little look. So in here, we can actually see the amphibious tank chassis, which funnily enough has the same production cost as an advanced medium. Wow. The cost of this is very high. And if we auto design, this is what we get. So you don't even need to add on an amphibious drive onto this. It says you can't even do it. The boat tank cannot have a propeller because it's already got one. All right. So don't try and add another one on, okay? You can't do it. Can you add an amphibious drive and then make it amphibious? No, you can't. <laughs> Okay, I tried. I tried. Okay. Anyway, so this is a dedicated amphibious tank, basically. To be honest with you, they're a bit expensive and the stats are just, they're a bit meh. Uh, but you can go for them if you want to go for them. Why not? Give it a shot. And they work the same way as commandos. They have like a special forces limit, so you can't just squeeze them out. All right. So the next thing is you have the ability for amphibious drive. So the amphibious drive. So you can add the amphibious drive to all tanks. So this is a heavy interwar tank and we can slap on an amphibious drive. Be away, it has a set production cost of two and it also increases the overall cost of it by an extra 10%. So two and then on top of an extra 10%. And it severely damages the reliability too. And also a hidden stat that you're not even aware of too. It, it has a penalty to attacking planes. There's kind of a downside to amphibious. It's not just a net gain. You can't just like throw an amphibious drive onto something and it just benefits everything. It does have a negative as well. Throw the amphibious drive onto. We have to specify there is an amphibious tank. We hit save. And there it is. And then if we want to add on the amphibious tank on, as you can see, it has a penalty in different terrain types. For the most part, all terrain types that aren't water suffer from a penalty. But surprisingly, also planes suffer from a very small penalty to movement speed and attack and be aware of that by the way that's important tanks for the most part are the most advantageous in planes and deserts so when you make a tank amphibious you're kind of losing a little bit you're making it more expensive you're losing some of the cool attack penalties on planes and deserts and you have to adhere to the special forces limit it feels to me like amphibious is a net loss you don't gain mostly from it there's many, there's more takeaways than gains flame tanks will fix that yeah sure but let's just talk about this tank let's not, let's not, let's not drop a water but what about flame tanks? What about flame tanks? We're not talking about flame tanks. We're talking about war tanks. These are war benders. You're talking about fire benders. They're different, okay? Anyway, let's talk about the exploit. We're here to talk about an exploit. Are you familiar with our Lord and Savior, the anti air gun? Advanced medium tank, medium armaments, and we have the advanced anti air gun. So, anti air tanks is basically a tank chassis, but instead of a turret on top with a cannon, you have an anti air fixed element on top of the tank. So, the beauty of a tank with an anti air gun on it is it has, I mean, loads of air attack. 43 air attack on this medium tank. That is insane. The downside, unfortunately, is you lose all your soft attack, you lose all your hard attack. Because if I redefine this as an air, look, we lose all of our breakthrough, we lose suppression, but supply use goes down. Oh no, there we go. It's an anti air tank. Oh, look at that big boy oh it's got two cannons pew pew motherfucker that looks awesome oh my god that looks so cool you can even get a tan and sunbathe because it's open on top amazing w when you make it an anti-air tank actually define it as an anti-air tank it loses all its breakthrough and one of the beautiful things about tanks is armor and breakthrough and if you're losing one of those stats it's like what's the freaking point what's the point here's the twist if you add on an amphibious drive you have the ability to define it as an amphibious tank yeah are you going with this are you with me and now it's amphibious it doesn't lose its breakthrough. So, 
What we got here is amazing piece of gear, all right? Hear me out. Listen, hear me out. We have an amphibious anti-air tank with awesome piercing, awesome hardness, awesome armor, and awesome breakthrough. So what you're looking at right now is, is potentially quite an expensive tank. I won't deny that. Adding an amphibious drive onto a tank makes it pretty expensive, but there's a lot of tweaks and adjustments you can make to make it a bit cheaper. For instance, going for riveted armor is a really easy way of making it cheaper. 20% cheaper is always pretty good. For the difference of cost, it's like 13 production cost compared to almost 16, so you're better off with a riveted, to be honest with you. But once again, if you get late game and you price is no option, because you're the Soviet Union in this case, it won't be a big deal. But overall, Oh, there we go. That is a beautiful beast. What do we add on to this? Auto loader, sloped armor. Look at that breakthrough and armor on this. Remember, this is an anti-air weapon. So what? What? What's the point of this? I don't understand. You guys are like, well, why is this even an exploit? What's even a big deal about this? I don't think this is meant to be in the game. This is not meant to be a thing. You should be able to add an anti-air gun onto an amphibious tank. It doesn't even make. I guess it just kind of makes sense, I suppose. The, the upside is you don't have to worry about the penalty to breakthrough because it's not classed as anti-air. So this tank basically does so many things in one. There are down of course the production cost is quite high due to the fact it's amphibious it has to, to adhere to the special forces limit but once again if you're making a tank division that's like a, a volunteer to be sent abroad this is the best tank division in the freaking world don't forget your tank division now doesn't need support anti-air doesn't need it because this tank has got 43 anti-air how insane is that let me add this onto a division i'll just show you we add this on and it's just added on 43 air attack <laughs> Add two on 86 air attack. So you don't you don't need to bother. You don't need to bother adding on support here. There's no point. You've reached the point here that you're over 50 air attack. It gets reaches the point where the AI reluctantly puts its planes up. And if it just put up its AA, like 2,000 cash, you're shredding like 50 every tick. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, the armor is insane. The breakthrough is insane. The piercing is decent too. The only downside is you just don't get a lot of soft attack. Oh, but 20 soft attack? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And don't forget as well, you're also adding in lots of amphibious attack, river attack, and marsh attack. Because you never really know when you need more of that, right? <laughs> I think you could do this with uh, SPGs as well. Let's see if you could do it with an SPG. So you can't do that because that's a fixed superstructure. What about a medium howitzer? Improved medium howitzer? Yeah, you could do that too. Oh my god, that's so broken. That's broken too. Do you know why that's broken? You don't get the breakthrough penalty as well. You lose 25% of your breakthrough if you make it an S SPG. But if it's amphibious, you lose a little bit. I don't know why you lose a little bit, though. I don't know where that comes from. But overall, the AA is the supreme one. The SPG is still pretty good, too. At the end of the day, if you stacked on a division, this is something I talk about quite on my division template videos. If you stack like 500 breakthrough and like 50 armor, this division will chew through everything. It won't even matter if you've not got enough soft attack. At the end of the day, the division will just push through everything anyway. So it won't even matter. At the end of the day, if you're making like a 40 width or a 30 width, which you should be if you're making an attack division, you can end up with like a ridiculous amount of breakthrough. But can't you just put a howitzer on a regular medium tank? Now you're actually kind of right there. No, you're actually right. Let's just see what the advantage is. So we get 45 soft attack if it's just an amphibious but if we make it artillery it goes to 58 because you get in the passive bonuses Ah, eh, okay so i understand the net gain here is significantly less because there aren't any passive bonuses under research for aa there aren't any passive bonuses so there's not actually much point so this exploit is specifically aa centric but at the end of the day can you really have too much aa nope no 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 anyway don't forget to like and subscribe that is the amphibious anti-air tank exploit use it now because they'll probably will patch it. I'm not joking. They probably will patch it, actually. Everyone who loved this video also loved this one. Give it a click.